Church of Edmonton. My name is Susan Rattan, one of the volunteers that's been working to put this service on for people in the building and to the many people who are watching from home. This is a good thing to do. This is a very special service for us today because it's the first service led by our new minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison. We are so glad that you're here. We gather together in gratitude on Treaty 6 land. This treaty was signed 145 years ago and is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. As part of that relationship, we have been looking at the new Indigenous names for the 12 municipal wards in Edmonton. Today we share Ward 11, which is the Garahil Ward in Southeast Edmonton. This ward was named for Michelle Garahil, who was chief of the Michelle Band First Nation at the time of the signing of the treaty. The band and its, all its members were stripped of their First Nation status by order and council of the federal government in 1958. In 1985, amendments to the Indian Act restored the status of 750 Michelle Band members, but its members continue to fight for status land recognition. Thank you, Susan. I think Susan and I are different heights. <laughs> Good morning, and I would like to add my welcome to Susan's. And my name is Reverend Rosemary Morrison, and it is my honor and privilege to serve this congregation, the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. We have arrived here this morning either in person or 
or you know, on Zoom, to, or perhaps you might, some might watch it later on on YouTube or Facebook. But we're here to do something, something important, otherwise we wouldn't be here. First off, I would like to acknowledge three things. Yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 and 9-11 tragedy in New York City. And while I won't be talking about that today, I would like to take a few moments, just a breath or two, to acknowledge that tragedy, to acknowledge the pain and suffering, and to acknowledge the turmoil that led to that attack on 9-11. Let's just take a breath together and acknowledge this. The second thing I need to say is there is going to be a water ritual during the service. I have provided what we need here in, in the church. But if you're at home, I invite you to find a bowl, put some water in it. It could be a nice bowl or it could be the bowl you had your cereal in this morning. And find also some pebbles or rocks or things that you can drop into your bowl at home. When we're doing this, when we're doing it here, you can't find uh, any pebbles or rocks, perhaps some game pieces or whatever you can find or gather, black beans, anything that you can find at home. I would also like to acknowledge, as Susan already has, that this is my first Sunday here in your pulpit, and I am excited to be here to be in ministry with you and to help guide this congregation to becoming fully itself. We have shown up this morning because being together in person or in Zoom or on Zoom feeds us. It soothes us and help us, helps us remember who we are individually and as a community. May this service touch you, make you laugh at times, give you something to think about, and bring you closer to your true es essence. So, come, let us open our hearts and minds together and begin. And Sheila and Ferguson, Fergie and your mom, would you like to light our chalice? I meant to grab you before the service, and I forgot. So let's do that together. Are you ready? Would you like to do that? I put you on the spot. with words by Katie Gilfand. We light this chalice as a symbol of reunion. We reunite in this sanctuary to share the flow of our hearts with one another. We gather together in ritual to celebrate our fountains of joy, to hold each other through storms of grief, <laughs> to guide one another through rapids of transformation to rest together on ponds of stillness. Together we honor the spirit of water, its many forms, and its life-giving essence. Please join in singing hymn number 38, Morning is Broken, may rise in body or spirit as you are able, and sing together.
called a water walker. So you may want to move your chairs a little bit to face it or stay where you are and turn your head. It's up to you. I'm really happy to see you today, Mio Gisagao. I'm, I'm sitting next to Slave Lake, actually. This is in Treaty 8 territory, where my family's from. So I feel very humble today that to know that my ancestors have walked these lands before me. Um, but the reason why I'm sitting here today is because I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about water and the importance of water and why water is so sacred to me, but to First Nations people. And I want you to think more about how you use water, how plants use water and how animals use water. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a reading about water and maybe put some questions up after for you to reflect on. Thank you, Ninaskamon. Noko miss love nippy and nippy love no miss rain or shine hot or cold calm or wild every morning like the women in her family before her Noko miss hopped out of bed and before doing anything else she said Nanaskamon nipi, for the life you give to every living thing on earth. Kisagi Heaton, I respect you. But one day, a wise Okimao told her, in my lifetime, the day will come when an ounce of water costs more than an ounce of gold. What are you going to do about it? Like an arrow, his words pierced Nokumis's heart. She looked around. She saw how people were disrespecting the water, wasting it, making it unfit for life. Day turned to night, night turned to weeks, and Nokomis remembered the Okimao's words. A few moons went by, and then one night, Nokomis had a dream. Early next morning, Nokomis called her sister and a squeo nitotamak over for tea to talk about their responsibility to protect Nippi. Four days later, Nokomis and the Mother Earth water walkers, as they came to be known, found themselves standing on the side of the road, wearing sneakers. Nokomis carried a copper pail full of Nippi in one hand and a Mixu staff in the other. If no one noticed Nippi, maybe they would notice the water walkers. Maybe someone would ask why they carried Nippi in the water pail. Maybe someone would be moved to protect Nippi too. Nokomis and the Mother Earth water walkers walked all around the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. They walked every spring for seven years. They prayed and sang to Nippi. They left tobacco in every lake, river, stream, and puddle they met. They got up before the birds and went to bed when Nokomis rose. Nokomis was interviewed on television, in newspapers, and on radio. She was even in movies. But big companies, politicians, and even her next-door neighbors still did not feel the urgency to, to protect Nippi. What more can I do? wondered Nokomis. One year later, over by the Atlantic Ocean, a friend of Nokomis had a dream. And she shared it with Nokomis as soon as she woke up. Nokoma shared the dream with all the people she had met during her walks. Word spread fast across Turtle Island, and everyone began to prepare. Next thing you know, there were a square walk standing at each salt nippy around Turtle Island, with a copper pail in one hand and a mixu staff in the other, wearing sneakers. 
In the west, Nokomis and the Mother Earth water walkers set off from the Pacific Ocean, saying they will do it for the water. One year after a devastating oil spill, Nokomis and the water walkers set off from the Gulf of Mexico singing to Nipi and praying for the healing of Nipi. They said, water, we love you, we thank you, we respect you. Next, Nokomis and the water walkers set off from the Atlantic Ocean in the east. At the send-off, they walked barefoot on the rocks and the beautiful petrocliffs and sang to Nipi. Putting on their sneakers, they started out on the migration trail their ancestors traveled hundreds of years before. In the frigid north, the ice was five feet thick. Nokomis and the Mother Earth water walkers put tobacco on the frozen Nipi, singing their thanks, respect, and love. Salt water tears filled the Mother Earth water walker's eyes as the four salt nipi met Lake Superior. One day, the four salt nipi will be reborn as clouds and be carried home on the wind, said Nokomis. Nokomis went through three knees and 11 pairs of sneakers walking for nipi. She got her knees replaced and is at home resting up, taking the time to surf online for new sneakers. Every morning, she puts down her tobacco for Nippy and sings her gratitude. She prays people wake up and realize that without Nippy, there is no life. And she continues to wonder, what are you going to do about it?
lucky are we that we get to share of our abundance. This congregation relies on your generosity, your knowing that what we are doing here together is important. Well, we won't be passing the plate. You can see that there's two plates over there and there that are going to nab you on your way out. So you're invited to place your offering in those collection plates. Each month, this congregation supports an organization, and this month the organization is Camp Firefly. Camp Firefly is a fun, educational, social, and personal leadership retreat for queer and trans youth age 14 to 24. Campers explore their identity, build resilience, enhance self-esteem, and develop leadership skills that will positively impact their lives, homes, schools, and community. I would venture to say that this is a life-saving adventure that we are, have been given, given the opportunity to support. So please give generously, and if you're at home or forget during the service, you can go online to their website. It's really easy to find. Just type in Camp Firefly, and that's spelled F-Y-R-E-F-L-Y. And it will pop up, and there is a donate button right on the home screen. It's very easy. So, and I will remind you of this again at the end of the service. So for now, Let's join together and sing from you I receive to you I give. Together we share and from this we live, hymn number 402. chairs get comfy, wiggle in, and take a couple of deep <sighs> cleansing breaths. Try to get comfy if you want. It's not a do or die situation. <coughs> so as you're taking these breaths and taking, focusing in on your breath, I invite you to notice how your chest rises as you breathe in and how it falls as you breathe out. And as you breathe in, I invite you to bring in, breathe in all that is life-giving. And as you breathe out, I invite you to let go of that which you no longer need. The winds of summer have blown about us, and the rains have fallen. And today we return to this community where we draw the sustenance to live out our faith in the world. Among us, there have been many journeys this summer, some physical, some mental, some emotional, and some of them spiritual. Some of us here have had experiences that have given us respite and renewal, ready to face the rest of the year with energy and a sense of hope and optimism. These waters represent the still waters of rest and renewal. And some of 
of us here were lucky to have experiences over the summer that elated us, brought us times of gladness, experiences that lifted our hearts. Our water that I've prepared for you is now transformed into the shining water of joy and happiness. Some of us here have had experiences over the summer that came near to breaking our hearts. Stormy experiences of such deep loss and pain that we shed countless Years. And now these same waters that we have with us here this morning are storm waters of grief and sadness. And some of us here in over June, July, and August have had experiences that warn of large or small alterations in our lives, in our families, in our work and in our relationships. Roiling, I love that word, roiling changes that brought disruption or comfort. These now are the rushing waters of change and transformation. So let's just take a moment here to reflect on our summer experiences before we come forward to drop our pebbles. Remember, our candles are now pebbles. Perhaps your water is both shiny and turbulent. Feel free to drop more than one pebble, as we all have many experiences and emotions. If you wish to drop a pebble into the still waters of rest and renewal, I invite you to do that. Or maybe your pebble is going to be dropped into the shining waters of joy and happiness. I invite you to bravely drop your pebble into the roiling waters of grief and loss, or the rushing waters of change and transformation. If you are joining us from home or your office or your car, I invite you to drop your pebbles in your water now, too. Please come forward. There is a path laid out for you so that we can come in this way and out. I invite you to stand and drop your pebbles. Just take a breath and drop your pebbles as you choose, knowing what they mean for you. I invite you to do so now. Follow the green path laid out for you. Thank you.
purified place, water, that represents all of us, all of our shared dreams, hopes, and values, all our different journeys and backgrounds. Then you joined here and at home with this, in this water with your pebbles of rest and renewal, joy and happiness, grief and loss, and transition and change. May all these elements represent, all these elements represented, remind us of the deep bonds that are so often hidden by our outward differences. In the year ahead, may we recognize our kinship in spirit and in need, and may, and may we make these relationships actual in our words and in our deeds. And may we be ever mindful that water is life. I've chosen a song for us to listen to. It's called Water is Life, and it basically, what I, how I decide of service is I usually find a piece of music, <laughs> and then I build the, the service around it, and this is the piece of music that this service is built around. It's been, um, it's written and performed by Sarah Thompson, and I have been in touch with uh, Ms. Thompson, and she has given her permission uh, to show this video today. Water is Life by Sarah Thompson. It's just going to take me a sec to set it up. All my relations come Every nation come All my relations under the sun We are one We are praying come We are praying come We are the song and we are that 
Have you ever noticed that most cities, towns, villages are built upon the shores of a body of water? Often, this is because, or most often, this is because the rivers, lakes, and oceans have provided the routes to bring goods and services and people to their shores, and boats were the mode of transportation. This past summer, I've made my acquaintance with many rivers, lakes, streams. I drove along the Ohio River, the Red River, the Submilkameen. I swam in the Okanagan and Kootenai Lakes, the Kettle River, the South Saskatchewan River, and a few lakes near Whitehorse, Yukon. And this summer, I fell in love with the Takini and the Yukon Rivers. The Yukon River is rich, it's powerful, and it's steeped in history. So is this river, this North Saskatchewan River, the river this city was built upon? And I am so looking forward to getting to know the history of this lit river and of this town. And I'm also looking forward to learning about this area prior to colonization. My last post in central Indiana, I lived on the Wabash River. I, was about, I lived about two or three blocks from the Wabash River, famously known for a song about a fictional train called the Wabash Cannonball. There was no such train, just so you know. I lived where the Tippecanoe River outflowed into the Wabash. You may have heard of the Tippecanoe River. I, I had but just kind of a little faint, tinkly bell. I didn't know what it was about. This was near where the last stand of the First Nations people in Indiana and Illinois, that whole area, fought. This is the last stand where they fought the U.S. military. Their loss, a long and painful story, precipitated the Trail of Tears the removal of the First Nations Native American people from Indiana. I learned a lot about that forced march, more accurately described as the Trail of Death. I found the stories rich, sad, heartbreaking, and astounding, just as I'll find the stories about this river and this land, rich, sad, heartbreaking and astounding. Either on this Sunday or the first Sunday in September and sometimes the last Sunday in August, most congregations in the UU world have what's called a water communion. It's in Canada, it's usually the first Sunday after Labor Day. It goes something like this. During the summer on your travels, you take a vial with you or a old yogurt container or something and dip it into a body of water that you are visiting and then you bring it back the first Sunday in September and then we have water communion. So the, a picture, pitchers of water are provided and a big bowl with some, a bit of water in it. And one by one people come and pour their water from their travels or substitute water from the pitchers and it's poured into the communal bowl. Then each person goes to the microphone and talks about where their water has come from. It usually ends up being a travel log. And I often used to feel like I couldn't measure up. Some people were hiking to the headwaters of the Fraser. Others were swimming on the, off the sandy beaches off the Gulf of Mexico. Are they gone? to Iceland and been in the mineral salt baths or something, and not me, not me. I usually went to Penticton to visit my mom and dad and took my kids. It's lovely there, did lots of swimming, but that's about it. I always felt left behind in that travel log. So imagine my delight when I found that you guys don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed you would. So I created a water service. Here we are in a water service for a water communion that you don't do. I'm okay with that. While I don't 
advocate for this congregation to begin doing that ritual this first Sunday after Labor Day. And you're looking forward to working with the Sunday service committee. I will get that right every time without hesitating. To developing a ritual of gathering for the first Sunday after Labor Day. I'm, I'm excited about what they're going to come up with. And by the way, this is news to them. <laughs> In the children's story, we learned about the water walkers who walked around the Great Lakes and then they gathered water from the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Arctic. They walked around and they prayed with each step and breath for the healing of the water. Did you know that the Saskatchewan River also has water walkers in this same vein? Yes? Anybody heard about that? This past summer, a ceremonial walk happened. It included um, the author of the children's book that we just watched. The walkers started in the headwaters of the Saskatchewan River in the, in the Rockies, um, in the Saskatchewan Glacier, it's called where it starts. And they ended this year in the forks of the North and South Saskatchewan. Next summer, they will take up where, where they left off and take the water to a south flow in Lake Manitoba. The summer after that, the walkers will start at the outflow and walk along beside the South Saskatchewan River. They did come through Edmonton last summer, around July 25th. Then, so they're going to start at uh, Lake Winnipeg, and they're going to um, bring it all the way back to the headwaters of the Saskatchewan River, and that is going to take two years, two summers. The Saskatoon Unitarians are a sponsor of the river walk, of this sacred walk. And the Reverend Karen Fraser Gitlitz, the minister there, was the only non-Aboriginal person on the walk. I spoke with her on Friday about her experience, and she recommended this book that we just watched. She is. She mentioned to me that she and one of, and the leader, um, Jessica Beads, would be delighted to come and talk with us in the spring about the river walk if people are interested. I certainly am and I hope that we decide that we will sponsor them as well. Tasha Beads, I beg your pardon. They will need our support. And so they have a Facebook page and they just walk, look them up but they, they posted every day uh, and posted pictures and there's lots of pictures of Reverend Karen Fraser Gitlitz on their Facebook page, the river walkers of to help us further understand what this is all about, because I didn't understand it at all until I started talking to Reverend Karen on Friday. I just didn't get it. I'm going to read an article dated August 13, 2021, by Ryan Kessler of Global News. Its title is, Saskatchewan River Walkers Offer Prayer for Water During Journey Across Prairies. And he writes, with relay-style precision, participants in the Saskatchewan River walk past a copper pail of water from one person to the next. On Thursday, they took turns carrying the water along Highway 40, having traversed more than 900 kilometers from headwaters in the Rocky Mountains to an area east of Leask, Saskatchewan. Try saying that five times fast, east of least Saskatchewan. No, you can't say it. <laughs> the group of 11 people, almost all of them indigenous except for Remy Karen, planned to carry the water to the fork of the North and South Saskatchewan River. Thursday, and where he's writing, marked the 33rd day of the walk. Marjorie Bacage, a Métis Two-Spirit elder, said their message is that the water is a sacred element rather than a resource. During the walk, the water is constantly in motion, just like, it how, just like how it moves in the river. We keep that water flowing, we pray for it, we sing for it, and we pray for everything around us 
as we pass. I'm going to interject. Reverend Karen was telling me on Friday that people are worried about the water, the drought, the lack of water in the rivers and the streams. And she was saying as they went past farmers' fields, the farmers ran out and gave them $100 bills because they're so worried about their crops. How are they going to keep their crops alive? I thought that was just, it gives, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. From the start of the walk, the group has taken roadways running along the North Saskatchewan River. Participant Tasha Beads described it as a very humbling experience. To see the landscape from the perspective of the river they're praying for. Beads learned the tradition from the late elder Josephine Ba Mamat Mandamin and has been doing water walks for 11 years and our story was uh, based on her work, our children's story. But this is her first walk in her ancestral territory. She says, part of this ceremony for me is in recognition that I have a responsibility and an obligation for the future generations. The nine women were joined by two men who are responsible for carrying an eagle staff. The eagle staff carriers look ahead and protect the women and the two spirit people who carry the water. Two spirit people and others that identify as LGBTQ can also carry an eagle staff. Another walker, Quinny Goldleaf, told Global News how the health and well-being of people are intertwined with that of the earth, land, and water. Whatever we're doing to ourselves, we're doing to the earth. And whatever we do to the earth, to the waters, to the land, we're doing to ourselves, when Goldie said. It's that reciprocal relationship. When they reached the fork of the rivers of east of Prince Albert in the coming days, they planned to return the water to the river and conclude the first leg of a four-year commitment. And as I was telling you, they're going, I won't read that again because it's just, exactly what I've already told you about their four-year commitment. During my conversation with Reverend Karen, I began to understand the importance and significance of what the water walkers are doing. I can only imagine how the act of doing this ceremonial walk impacted the participants. Any journey mindfully taken changes us. And I strongly encourage this congregation to learn more about the water walkers and support them over the next three years. As we begin our ministry together, our walk from beginning today to who knows where or when, I wonder if we can even imagine feeling a fraction about the Unitarian Church of Edmonton and about the people who live in this city as the water walkers feel about the river. As we embark on this journey together, the stories that we will be sharing with one another will be rich, sad, heartbreaking, and astounding. We have a long walk ahead of us. What will you be carrying? What will you need for protection? And what are you offering as your service to this living, breathing entity? May we work together in love and care to bring this water to life. May it be so, and blessed be. I invite you to take a breath and rise when you are ready, willing, able, or to stay seated. It's hard to sit, though, if you're singing Blue Book Home. 1064 in the teal, teal hymn book. If anybody wants to join me in the front singing it so that you can hear us singing back and forth to one another, please do so.
he extinguished this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And we will now sing, Carry the Flame. Because a holy and generous love is both the reason and the means by which we transform the world. So go in peace, gentle people, go in peace. There are a few church-related announcements. Right after this service, there will be a social, social justice meeting here in the sanctuary. So please stay if you're interested in being part of that. We'll sit probably in a circle, socially distanced in this sanctuary, in this place. Don't forget to drop your offering off in the little collection plates, in the collection plates. They're not little, they're just the regular ones. We don't have small ones, it's funding. <laughs> in the collection plates on your way out. And if you're not able to do that, sometime please go on to Camp Firefly's website and donate what you can. Are there any announcements from the floor that I'm missing? Is there something important that I am missing? Thank you. And I would like to thank everyone that came out today, either in person or on Zoom. Thank you for being here. We can't do this alone. We are all needed. And thank you to those who have helped in putting the service together and the sound. Um, Ruth Marriott, Mike Feast is working uh, on Zoom, Andrew Mills, Gordon Ritchie on piano, and so many others. I'm sure I've missed somebody putting the chairs out, taking them down. There's so much to do. Oh, the front desk people, Susan and Jennifer, and thank you, Susan, for being today and being part of this service. And now I bid you well, go in peace, as I said, and come back next week. <laughs> <laughs>